only game that I have on Steam now. So hello everyone, my name is Ebolon and in today's video we are going to count down top 10 best crafting games for creative builders. I'm not creative builders, mm. but just before we dive through the video, I really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. You know, I promised I go Salvador Dali style for my thousand subscribers celebration. And I'm growing my mustache. For Let's dive to the video. The Long Dark. The Long Dark brands itself as a thoughtful survival and crafting game, meaning it's less about animals mauling you at every corner, and more about the even distribution of danger. The ever icy landscapes, scarce opportunities to feed yourself, and of course, the occasional beer of wolf you can't just take down as you please make the game a tense experience. Even if you like your games a little more mellow, you don't have to give this one a miss. The different modes offer anything from a quiet and contemplative time with fewer dangerous animals to a story mode or a regular survival challenger. Number 9. Sons of the Forest as the follow-up to the forest, Sons of the Forest builds on its predecessor, with plenty of freedom when it comes to crafting. You'll be making use of resources on the remote island you find yourself in, from breaking down sticks to creating tools and eventually building up your own shelter. You can even cook up something more complex if you are willing to get creative and put the time in. You're certainly going to have to get crafty to keep yourself safe from danger. With co-op support, you can also get together with pals and share items with your group to work together to create your own defenses. Number 8. Ark Survival Evolved By now, you think this list had to cover every scenario, right? Wrong. One word. Dinosaurs. Rideable dinosaurs. Our survival evolved has you starting off with nothing and you build yourself a hut with a nice roof and some weapons to clobber dinosaurs over the head with. You can either use them for resources, of course, or tame them. Like with Minecraft, the base game has grown into something that isn't just about crafting, it's a great community experience. Number 7. Terraria. Don't accept anything but the original. Chances are if you're one of the 20 million people who have bought Terraria since its release in 2011, you haven't had much of a need for any other crafting game since. Not just because the updates steadily kept coming over the years, every aspect of Terraria is enhanced through the crafting options, so if crafting is what you enjoy most, it hardly gets more varied and intricate than this. One on the other side of the crafting metal is battle that is a that is a manic as it is difficult. Making Terraria great for all those who love the relaxed atmosphere of crafting but don't want to boot up another game to have a go at SNE's era 2D combat. Number 6. Dragon Quest Builders 2 Combining this prowling Dragon Quest JRPG franchise with a sandbox builder doesn't seem like a very intuitive thing to do, but perhaps it's that mix of opposites that make it so successful. You have an island to shape in whatever way you please and a specific building quest besides, so you can be sure to craft everything the game has to offer at one point or another. Since crafting is a block based you can of course start to go absolutely crazy, but it's really the story that makes Dragon's Quest Builders to such a standout. In a genre full of survival, tower defense and general killing sprays, a real heartfelt story, not to mention one of the JRPG's proportions is simply too very hard to come by. Number 5. Starbound There are a lot of games on this list that ran with a style of gameplay and, and presentation that organized with Terraria, but none do the formula justice as well as Starbound does. No wonder after all after all, it initiated with one of Terraria's original creators. As the name suggests, the Starbound is all about exploring different planets, and developer Chucklefish has crafted a number of quests and backgrounds as diverse as the different planets and biomes. What a Starbound had over Terraria is a story, one that fits into things so seamlessly that you can engage with it your own pace. 
which is your own base. Simply craft items and build your base at your leisure and you may stumble upon quests that give you something interesting to do next. Number four, Subnautica. Subnautica. It's not it's not always better versus weather. There's still plenty under the sea that can kill you, but Subnautica leaves not so much of the excitement of clashing with the marine populace, mostly because more often than not, they come out clearly victorious. Instead, you want to craft equipment that allows you to explore more of its beautiful alien ocean. For longer, you may be going out to find resources to enhance your base, but oops, you fled from the undersea monsters to god knows where or an interesting bit of undersea landscape caught your eye. No Man's Sky Thanks to the huge updates, Hello Games implemented crafting is one of the aspects in No Man's Sky. You can keep busy with it for hours. You've always had ample options for upgrading your suit, multi-tool and ship, but now you can also put work into your exocraft and a base worthy of a hard-working astronaut. The number of blueprints and ingredients is huge, so you will definitely find multiple uses for whatever you pick up and even refine further in a multitude of the ways. Essentially, No Man's Sky is about two of the great joys of gaming, exploring landscapes until you fall off a random cliff and lining your pockets with all types of stuff, the use of which will not become apparent until much, much later. Number 2. In Project Zomboid, the player aims to survive for as long as possible in an apocalyptic and zombie-ridden area around the city of referred to as Nox Country, which has been quarantined by the government. The player can choose the character's appearances, occupation, and traits before selecting to spawn within one of the four starting towns. The occupation that is chosen also will influence where exactly the character will spawn. For example, a firefighter has a higher chance of spawning in a fire station if the chosen town has one. On top of avoiding zombies, the player has to manage their personal needs, such as hunger, stress, fatigue, and boredom. To stay alive through resting, scavenging for supplies and using survivalist techniques, the player can level skill through activities and reading skill books and magazines. The game uses traditional Romero style slow moving zombies through certain zombies are faster than others and sandbox mode includes a sitting for 28 days later style sprinter zombie. Before just we dive to the last one, I really appreciate if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Ebolan, thank you for watching the video, let's dive to the last one. And number one. Yeah, Minecraft. Some games start a genre but don't stick around long enough to see it grow. Others will be replaced by better games, but not Minecraft. By now, this game is a symbol for the ingeniously of millions of delegate crafters around the world, and no less than an absolute pop culture phenomenon. With the AR spin off, Minecraft Earth. In early access, the story of the main game continued. Not that it over went anywhere, with most of the over 170 million, double that if you're counting the free Chinese release. Enjoy the block builder that started everything. It's a crafting game for everyone, not only because the only violence you find is a fantasy kind, it's simply the best game to create something of your own. If you can think it, you can build it. And it's as much fun to play yourself as it is to watch others create.